If you haven't checked out the Twitter edition of the Node Boundaries Q&A, please do so. This is the Facebook edition. I find it striking, even though there are many more Twitter followers. And in general, the Facebook page for OTR Central, which you need to like if you haven't done so already, and also follow the show on Twitter at OTR Central on Twitter if you haven't done so already. That Facebook page doesn't get a lot of interaction, but when I start asking questions for Q&A, the Facebook page is vastly superior to the Twitter page. I don't know why that is. It just is what it is. But anyways... Um, I'm looking forward to doing this one. I couldn't get to every question, so for those of you that ask questions that I don't touch on in this video, I will try to actually answer your question uh, in reply to your Facebook uh, comment with the question in it. Oh, and make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already, and check out the Oterra Central Store on Pro Wrestling Tees, and if you find it in your heart, buy a damn shirt, okay? Because once I sell 25 of these damn things, I can release more designs, which can give you a fuck Dolph Ziggler shirt, a Breakfast Club Rules bitches shirt, a Pray the Zane Away shirt. There's so many other things, so many other shirts, so many other designs. we got to sell those first 25. So be one of the first to join in on the fun. Um, let's go ahead and get started with the Q&A, though. Brian Yule, opinion on the Mayweather-McGregor World Tour and what you would do with the $300 million Floyd was making. I don't even want to think about the $300 million that Floyd is making, other than the fact I would do one thing, pay my taxes. Uh, opinion on the Mayweather-McGregor World Tour. Uh, they're rectifying the previous wrongs they made with the Mayweather-Pacquiao hype. Now, granted, McGregor can carry these types of segments, so as a result, it makes sense for them to go on this pro wrestling promotional tour that they had. Um, this is all kayfabe shit. They're planning out and preparing for this shit ahead of time. If you don't think so, you're a fucking clown. Um, but I don't care about the fight. I think it's a joke. It is what it is. It's not going to do anything for boxing. It's not going to do anything for UFC. These two guys are going to have a big money grab and then fuck all who cares what happens. I'm not spending the ninety nine ninety nine for the fight. And I hope none of you do either, but I know ultimately people are going to. Um, but it, it's just kind of awkward because Mayweather seems like he's kind of sort of trying to present himself as a legendary babyface and McGregor is trying to present himself as a heel. And it's like a WWE shit. The heel's trying to be a face. The face is trying to be the heel. And they're trying to present it as such. And it just doesn't work. McGregor is clearly the baby face in this situation. May Mayweather is hateable on so many different levels. In terms of his boxing style. In terms of the way he flaunts his money but can't pay his fucking taxes. For being a woman beater and all that other crap. Yeah, McGregor is clearly the baby face. But I don't like McGregor. I don't like Mayweather. I don't give a shit about either one of these guys. People want to be giggly tits about this stupid fucking fight, then go ahead. I'm not going to waste my time with it. David Verrett, fuck, Mary kill, Trish Stratus, Rebel, or Sojo Bolt? Um, Trish Stratus now doesn't really do much for me. Trish Stratus back in the day, I'd have been fucking and marrying, and I would have changed the rules of the question. But in this case, I'd fuck Sojo Bolt, I'd marry Rebel, and I'd kill Trish. Just how it is. She's married now with babies, and eh? she's run through. Good enough for me. Uh, Gary Yip, what happened to the credit building and repair series on the Schlage Daddy TV channel? I, I, you know, I don't know why I stopped doing that, and I should have followed through on that. And that's been one of my big bugaboos over the years on both of the channels, is I'll start something and I'll stop. Like, I'll lose interest, get tired or bored of it, won't be patient with it, won't see it through. Uh, maybe I get disappointed with the result of one of the videos in terms of its views or its interaction, and I'll think that it's not a good idea instead of digging my heels in and believing in what I'm doing and being right about it. So, um... I'm sure I'll do something in the future. I just will have to get the impulse to do it. Uh, Nick Perkins, would you even give Black China a chance? Fuck that. Like, how, how ridiculous is this world? Where somebody like Rob Kardashian solely has money because his slut bag sister did a fucking sex tape. And was proud to put it out there to get herself over and get famous. Like, it makes me fucking sick that this fat piece of crap who hasn't had to do shit his fucking life gets money because of a TV show, because of his slutty-ass fucking family, his, especially his two oldest, older sisters, fucking uh, Chloe Hobag and um, fucking Kim Slutbag, and then, you know, psycho-ass Chris. Just a dumb-ass family. And he's throwing hundreds of thousands of dollars at this fucking plastic bitch Black China. Give me a fucking break. I give her a chance? Hell fucking no. I'm going to touch her with your stuff, dude. Who knows what that skank is fucking carrying? 
And here's the thing. Rob Kardashian, if anything else, I hope he learned a very valuable lesson out of this. Number one, don't be such a bitch about things. Number two, be a fucking man about things. Number three, don't try to wife a hoe. And in particular, number four, don't try to wife that hoe. Now, people like T.I. that chime in on this, a couple things for T.I. One, how about you release a decent album for the first time in I don't know how many fucking years. And number two, more importantly, maybe you can worry about talking shit to people about what they're doing in their life when you're dumbasses and having to serve prison time for fucking carrying around guns that you're not supposed to. Like, of all the fucking people, T.I. is going to sit there and fucking ju pass judgment? Fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck all these screwballs. Makes me sick. If it's not that, it's the fucking Jay-Z and Beyonce worship. It's good Christ almighty. Like, oh my God, Beyonce is the greatest. Shut the fuck up. She could be good and we don't have to treat her like the fucking Virgin Mary. We don't have to treat her like the Madonna. And Jay-Z... He could be great without us thinking that he's some type of generational changing figure. Yes, yes, he's somebody we should look up to. Fucking soul crack and all that shit. Well, oh yeah. Let, let's, let's put him up on a fucking pedestal. It's like the idiots that buy into Ray Lewis's bullshit. Oh, uh, at, at best, he obstructed justice. At worst, he did a whole lot more. But let's go ahead and pretend that he did. Oh, praise the Lord. He found God. He saved. So let's make him a fucking hero. Fuck you. Not you specifically, Nick, but you know what I'm getting at. Hell no, I wouldn't give Black China a chance. Like, look at that bitch. Like, I like darker skin anyways. Um, but lighter skin could be fine too, but not her. Like, her and Nicki Minaj do absolutely nothing for me. Nothing. Similar with Beyonce. Uh, James Fields. Your thoughts on the Be A Man album and did you own it? I absolutely own it. I don't used to own it. I bumped it all the time when I would go to work. I got, I think it got lost in the move. I don't know what the hell happened to it, but I'm going to get it again. I love the fact that it was like a wrestler's version of Will Smith's good, clean rap with absolutely no profanity and the Be A Man Hulk sound. Phenomenal. The tribute to Mr. Perfect Kurt Hunting, awesome too. Steve Jacobson, can Paige's career recover from being with Alberto? More importantly, maybe the question should be, can Alberto's career recover from being with Paige? Oh, why is it we look at the situation, we automatically assume Alberto is the guilty one and Paige is the innocent one. Why isn't she the guilty one and he the innocent one or why aren't both of them guilty or both of them innocent or more so both of them guilty? Can Paige's career recover? She was fucking it up on her own just fine before Alberto really got involved and this is this whole shit of we talk about empowering women and all this other crap and treating them like equal but then we don't. We sit there and shield women for accountability and responsibility. We joke about it and talk about it as a good fucking thing. Now, at some point in time, when do we look at this bitch and say, you're fucking crazy? And believe me, I live with a crazy woman. And she'll be the first one to tell you she's a fucking psycho. Like, if you even have Ashley's phone number saved in my phone as demon, because that's what the fuck she is. And again, she'll be the first one to tell you. With that said, I know fucking crazy. This bitch is bats. I know it. I can see it. I can feel it. Now, that doesn't mean that Alberto's not a bad dude either. There's something about him that's kind of, uh, I don't know. But let's stop making Paige out to be the innocent victim here. Because I know she's not. I know she's not. Believe me, she's not. And furthermore, what makes me sick is the fact that Alberto gets suspended by Global Force Wrestling. But nothing happens with Paige with WWE. Because even though she's not uh, on the road or she's not on TV, she's still getting paid her downside guarantee. While it's being investigated, why the fuck isn't she getting suspended? I'll tell you exactly why. Because she's a fucking woman. Because we have this sickening thing in our society that we have equality of convenience. No, it should be equality of equality across the fucking board. But of course, when it comes to fucking women in this society, and in particular in this goddamn country, it's not. Because we're afraid of being called chauvinistic. We're afraid of being called sexist. No, it is what it fucking is. Like, it, it used to piss me off. When all these girls I was like in high school with were having all these political opinions and all this other shit. And they'd have the right to vote, but they didn't have to find a fucking sign up for the selective service like I did when I was 18. How come the fuck I got to put myself potentially at risk for if they reinstituted the draft? I got to get called. These heifers don't, but they have basically all the other same rights as I fucking do. I don't mind them having all these other rights, but they should have to sign up for the selective service too. Talking about the selective service, kind of aging myself a little bit, but... You get what I'm saying? Like, we can have all these opinions, but we can't actually hold them accountable for anything. No, when do we start asking uh, Paige, 
Do you have self-destructive behaviors? Are you a crazy bitch? Are you on drugs? Are you just determined to fuck your life up? You know, I mean, I mean I'm just saying. A uh, Peter Gunn, do you find Karen Jarek to be attractive? I, as a general rule, I'm not attracted to horses. Maybe you are. I don't know. But I wouldn't touch K Karen Jarrett with your stuff, period. Because they call that bestiality. And in decent forward-thinking societies, although we wonder if the United States really is that anymore, we don't believe in bestiality. And just because I'm white doesn't mean that I'm down with that shit, okay? Brian Wolmer, did you ever own an Atari 2600? My dad used to for years, had it. I wanted to take it at one point in time. Of course, he kept it. And then ultimately, like a dipshit, he sold it at a garage sale probably for 30 bucks. When you had Frogger and all these other games, could have probably gotten hundreds for it. He, of course... Got probably 20, 30 bucks for it. Because that's what Peter Arnold does, damn it. And then afterwards, he'll go celebrate by smoking one of his crappy Swisher sweets and putting mayonnaise on a turkey sandwich. Oh, baby! And put some of that that fucking, fucking German mustard on it. What a honky. That's pops. Richard Leighton Adams, why don't you like Jeff Jarrett when he's the greatest IC champion ever? Who in the fuck thinks Jeff Jarrett is the greatest IC champion of all time? This Memphis mid-card piece of crap had to create a fucking wrestling company just so that way he could make himself world champ after being in a company and helped run it into the fucking ground because he was butt buddies with the fucking booker who, or the writer who helped make him a multiple-time world champion. Then he forms a new company, throws his dad out of the picture, basically, so that way he can bring in his butt buddy who will always put him in the fucking world title scene. Fuck Jeff Jarrett. Who the hell thinks he's the greatest IC champion of ever? Who? I just don't have the energy to do this right now and assume the position and go ranting and raving for a few minutes, Richard. But this question does all right. Kyle Garner, with the changes within the Colts, how does their future look? A little bit better. They still have Chuck Pagano. Mm. I like their defensive draft. I really did. I think Malik Hooker is going to be a stud. They have Andrew Luck. That means something. I think they've got a quality dude in Ballard as their general manager. So they're taking some steps in the right direction. Mark Whalen, when can we expect 2017 NFL season previews on Schleg Daddy TV? August. Beginning in August. Jerry and Anthony Simmons. You think Dak Prescott will take a step back this year? No. I think he'll at least stay the same, if not progress a little bit, as he gets into year two of that offense, as they trust him a little bit more. Uh, take some of the governor off of him a little bit. Um, I think he's going to take it over a little bit more. I, I would not expect to step back at all. I'd expect some improvement and some growth. Uh, Marshall McDonald, what's your current job? What's your favorite job? And do you have any advice for me as I get ready to in, um, enter my adult life? A current job, I'm a floor supervisor for Capital One in regulatory compliance, which is ironic. A schemer like me, somebody who's always looking for an out in this and that, you know, now I help determine what's compliant with the law and what breaks the law seems appropriate. Um, favorite job, probably way back in the day as a UPS package handler. Um, man, that used to be so much fun. Uh, sit there and go work three or four hours a night, a few nights a week, uh, cuss at the union stewards. And mind you, I'm only like 18, 19 years old, but these fat fucks would be sitting there shitting on our part-time soup, the belt soup who's trying to help out, but their fat asses are trying to go over to fucking get some pancakes at the restaurant, but they want to sit there and bitch about, oh, a union person should be doing that. Then get your fat fucking union steward ass over here and do something. Oh, they didn't. That's right, because it's pancake time, bitches. Mm. Oh, they used to be so much fun. Man, some of the grimy shit we used to do, too, in terms of how we fill those next day air canisters. I feel bad for anybody that used to get packages that lived in freaking... Nebraska or Iowa, I'm sorry, but your shit kind of deserved it. Some of the shit you used to send, the 160-pound tractor parks, the big fucking gateway boxes when we had trouble making them boxes fit because it would come down at the last minute of the fucking belt and the can's already 98% full. You better believe I had a six-inch lead pipe we called the fucking equalizer. We'd bang that shit in there until it fucking fit. That's UPS quality, bitches. <laughs> I love that fucking job. It was awesome. Martin James. Uh, most overrated in looks, Alexa the Elf Bliss, AJ, Jerry the Mouse Lee, or Casper the Friendly Page? I'd say Casper the Psycho Page, actually. A page. I can at least see if you're into, like, the 12 to 15-year-old girl look, you like AJ Lee. I can see why some dudes like Alexa Bliss. I don't see why anybody likes Paige. She's not good to look at. Her body sucks. And she's a fucking batshit psycho. Probably a co too. Probably. Who knows? 
Yeah, I don't see why anybody would think Paige was the hottest out of those three. None of them really float my boat, but come on. Paige? Paige? Oh, my God. David Hadley, are you still going to WrestleMania 34? What are some of your weekend plans? I don't know my weekend plans. Don't be trying to stalk me yet. Uh, I still plan on going to WrestleMania 34. Yes, I do. And if the Schlag Daddy's going to be in New Orleans, buckle up, bitches. And Marshall McDonald, I'm sorry. I forgot about the advice for adult life. In terms of the working world, a few things. Number one, try to remain as positive as you possibly can. Number two, work hard. Number three, uh, instead of always focusing on what other people get or complaining about things not going well, focus on what you could do better first. Number four, uh, be conscientious of your audience. Be conscientious of your branding and the way you present and carry yourself. And make sure that you're not just somebody that feeds into the negativity and the bullshit that will come in the working world. That you're somebody that maybe acknowledges it, but then tries to look past that by providing solutions and alternatives and fixes to solve for the core problems. You don't want to be a part of the problem. You want to be a part of the solution. There's so many other things, but those would just be a few. Uh, Stephen Bradley, what would you say if you got to induct Sid into the WWE Hall of Fame? I'd make sure I put that man over like a million bucks like he deserves to. One of the more criminally shit on wrestlers of all time for reasons that still piss me off to this day. I've had my fun at the expense of Sid too, but I don't think anybody ever doubts that I'm a raging psycho Sid Mark. And I will always defend that dude. And I will always have that dude's back, best believe. Uh, Shay Delane. When did fans begin to care about spot monkey matches instead of psychology and characters and so forth? Uh, when too many of the wrestling fans that weren't athletic to get in any other fucking sports, I took the shit too seriously because they read too many Meltzer dirt sheets over the fucking years, got into the business themselves, and the business stopped caring about psychology and in-ring storytelling, and it was just about spots to get to spots to get to fucking spots. It's not just them, because there's parts where the promotions do this shit too to help make it this way. But that's why the fans started to begin to care only about that, because the storytelling was so lax. The product in general was terrible. The characters weren't the same. What the fuck else did you have? I mean, really? Martin Hall, did Jinder Mahal get his push because he knocked out Finn Balor? You know what? I hope that's the fucking reason. He gave Finny the twink a concussion, and I hope that's the reason he got a push. This Finn Balor fucking sucks, and soon enough... Whether you agree or not, you're going to realize that too. It's coming, and I'll wait, and I'll welcome you on the Finn Balor sucks bandwagon when you fit, come to this conclusion. Like, who looks at fucking Finn Balor and says, I want to build my wrestling company around him? Once the entrance is over, what the fuck do you have? Some twink-ass-looking Calvin Klein model who does a foot stomp. Give me a fucking break. Connor Boyd, will you ever consider doing a Google Plus live stream with the old crew and other YWC members? Yes and yes. Stay tuned. Alan Pesson, why don't you like Sami Zayn? A couple questions for you. Number one, why would anybody like Sami Zayn? Number two, why would you like fucking Sami Zayn? And number three, what's so good about Sami Zayn? The storytelling in his matches is atrocious. There's absolutely no real psychology whatsoever. His promos stink. His character stinks. As a performer, I don't think he's particularly good. And who the fuck looks at him and says, that's a superstar? I mean, it's just van another vanilla, bland fucking dude to me. Michael Corvin, how often do you get to see your kid? Ooh, you hit me in the serious here. This is the last question of this Q&A. And again, for those of you that I didn't get to answer, sorry, and I'll try and hit you up on Facebook. Um, I don't. She's 10 now. I haven't seen her since the day she was born. Um, it's one of those things where shit happens, and... Um, Probably, there are probably things I could have done better to help the situation along to where I would have been able to see her. Some of it probably plays into the fact that, you know, before she was born, I was actually out in Iowa, and now I'm out here in Virginia, so it's not like I'd be seeing her every single day in person anyways. You know, so there are things at play. There are things I could have done better. I could have maybe tried harder. But then to say that I didn't try is also false. Um, but you do also get to the point where you try, and then the other person intentionally tries to duck and dodge, and then pretend like you're the bad guy, even though they know what the fuck they're doing, um, that at some point in time, you say, I'm not going to keep setting myself up for failure here. I'm just going to block it. And that's kind of what happened. And it kind of become, based on the fact that I started having to pay 600 a month in child support, plus 
you know, for the health insurance plus two thirds of the out of pocket, which let's face it, that means I pay any and all fucking out of pocket. You know, I'm not a hundred thousand dollar a year guy, not even a fifty thousand a year guy. I'm like a forty five thousand dollar a year guy. You know, so talk about having to pay seventy two hundred seventy yeah, seventy two hundred a year in child support. I mean, that stings. Especially when you're talking about that's not pre tax money. And then having to pay for the health care and all this other shit. I mean, it just becomes a business expense. You feel like a seed donor and got it shafted in the bad end of a business deal. And here's what I'll say in terms of when you look at the bigger picture, this would be my ultimate defense. And I think it's a solid one. And I think the logic is pretty solid. Is that I've dated women that have kids and been involved with women that have kids. And I think they would tell you I was really good to their kids. And in some cases, they probably wish, the, the moms anyways, that they would have been better to me. I've also been with Ashley now for six fucking years. I don't have any other kids. I just have that one, allegedly. Um, but since then, she's had two other kids by two more guys. And neither one of them are in the kid's life either, the best that I know. She's not with either one of them. Who might have more credibility here? The Schleg Daddy or the Water Buffalo? Like, I mean, here's the intelligence of this heifer. Is you got knocked up by the white dude and you fucked him off. And maybe you had your reasons. And I don't even care at this point. But just how dumb. And then you got pregnant again. And then to get pregnant again. And then you're not even with those dudes either. But I'm the bad guy. I'm the problem. It speaks again to the whole shit of, for women, after how many times do you stop blaming the men and you start looking at yourself and saying, what the fuck am I doing wrong? But then again, when you have people around you enabling you, especially when we're dealing with women and their, their families and friends always talk about how great they are and how bogus the guy is and all this other bullshit chiming in where they don't fucking know. I mean... What more can he really say? Just saying. Just saying. Um, so yeah, for those of y'all that like to sit there and think it's cool to not strap up and let it fly, be careful. Be careful. It's not even a disease thing at this point. A bigger disease for me is the fact that I've had to pay all this money out and still have to pay all this money out for another eight fucking years. Like the best thing about uh, my daughter when she graduates high school is that I won't have to pay child support anymore. And that's a fucked up thing, but that is the way it is. So it also kind of kills your buzz or, of, or desire to really have any more kids. Like I'm already 36 now. Do I want to be a fucking old dad? Like sitting there having, you know, kids still in high school and I'm in my mid and late 50s? I really don't know at this point. And especially based off of the first experience. Why the fuck would anybody want to have any more? And, and what bothers me, the one thing I will say that bothers me about it is the fact is I don't care if you fuck me off. I don't care if you just want that fucking child support money and want to pretend like I'm the greatest evil in the fucking world. You didn't have to treat my mom like shit. You didn't have to keep my mom out of the picture either. Bonnie Sue didn't deserve that shit. I don't care about me. I am me. I can deal with that shit myself. She didn't deserve that. And for that, I won't forgive that bitch. For the other stuff, eh. It is what it is. I'll let the evidence speak for itself. Like, she got knocked up by the white boy and fucked him off and got him out of the picture. Then got knocked up by two other dudes and they're not in the fucking picture. Because of course they fucking aren't. But the dude's the problem, right? And, that, and that's the shit I'm talking about. So, hopefully I get to see her someday. But I don't even know how much of an emotional attachment there would be or if there would always be that lingering resentment of you got to pay all this child support and do all this other shit. And da 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 And trying to probably overcome a decade plus of her, mo her mom always pecking in her fucking ear. Da, 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 talking shit. Da, 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 da. You almost get to that point where you're like, eh, hopefully at some point in time as adults you can fucking try and establish some type of relationship. And hopefully by then you, you'd be able to get her in an adult state of mind. Get her away from her fucking mom and be like, hey, you know. 
Here's my version of events. You take it to be what it is. But if not, so fucking be it. So anyways, thank you for this no boundaries Q&A. Hopefully in future versions of these, we ask more out of bounds type of questions because I'm going to answer any of these fucking questions. They don't have to just be wrestling related when we do these type of theme Q&As. In fact, please don't make them wrestling alone questions. Or if they are wrestling related, make them fun like fuck, Mary kill and all this other shit. But thanks you guys on Facebook for submitting all your questions. I'll see you later. And remember, buy a damn shirt.